All right, welcome back to Bite Size Chemistry. Today we're going to go over Guy Lussac's law. And Guy Lussac's law relates pressure and temperature. Like Charles's law, it's another direct relationship, meaning that if pressure increases, temperature also increases, and vice versa. Okay. Now we can describe the effects of Guy Lussac's law using the following equation your initial pressure, or P1, over your initial temperature, and setting that equal to your final pressure over your final temperature. Some things to be aware of is that your pressure units must match. So if you're given two different pressure units, you need to convert. And your temperature units must be in Kelvin. If not, you need to convert them so that it is. Now, how do I know if I have a Guy Lussac's equation? Well, I'm going to scan through. And if I notice that I'm only given pressure and temperature units, then I know I'm working with the Guy Lussac's law, if those are the only units I'm given. So, in that scenario, the first thing I'm going to do is write down my equation. Then I'm going to list my variables so that as I'm reading a word problem, I can fill in these variables and find out which one I'm missing. For equations like this, you're always going to give, be given three of the four. So let's read. A sealed canister of gas has a pressure of 2.5 atm. So that's my first pressure. Okay. At a temperature of 273 kelvin, that's my second or my first temperature. If the temperature is raised to 546 kelvin, what will be the new pressure? So I'm looking for P2. I don't know what it is, so I'm just going to mark it as X. Inside the canister, assuming the volume remains constant. All right, so I've got pressure 1, temperature 1, temperature 2. I'm looking for pressure 2. The easiest way to solve this equation is to go ahead and plug these values directly into the equation that we wrote here at the top. So that would mean I have 2.5 on top, 273 on bottom, and I'm going to set that equal to x because I don't know what my P2 is. So x is P2 and 546 on bottom. Now, to solve for x, the first thing I need to do is cross multiply, get everything up to the top. So if I do 546 times 2.5, that gets me 1365. And then if I do 273 times x, that's going to get me 273x. Now, to get x by itself, I have to get rid of this 273. And because right now the x is multiplied by 273, if I divide it by 273, I'll get x by myself or by itself because these values will cancel out. Now, in algebra, whatever I do on the right side of my equation, I have to do on the left side. So now my equation looks like this, 1365 over 273 equals x. Solve for that, 1365 divided by 273 gets me 5. Okay. Now what is x in this equation? Well, we said x was p2. So this 5 is really our p2 value. So p2 equals 5. And then I'm going to look because my initial pressure was an ATM. My final pressure must also be an ATM because my units must match. So the answer to this problem is 5 ATM. Notice how when we increase the temperature from 273 to 546, our pressure also increased from 2.5 to 5. All right? See you next time for another gas law.